In this video, we're going to build off the last few videos using the things we've written in those and finish writing the calculator program. We're going to start with a calculator program that can take user input and clear it. Uh, currently, the operations don't do anything. That's what we need to implement. To help along with that, we're going to use a sub-VI that I wrote before that takes two operands and an operation, performs that operation, and outputs that value. This sub-VI was implemented in a previous uh, video. Why don't we test it? We put 5 plus 2 equals 7. Fifteen times four comes out as sixty, so it's working. Let's go back to the calculator program. Currently, we're only keeping track of the user input. There are at least two other things that we need to be keeping track of. Uh, one of those being the operation that we are expected to perform. The other piece of information is stored values. So when we enter in 5 plus 4, that 5 leaves the screen and needs to be stored, and then we enter in the 4. So right now I'm just setting up initial values. My initial value for the operation is going to be addition, and my stored value is going to be 0. I chose plus and zero because that operation and that value won't change the value of anything that's being input. I could have just as easily have chosen one and multiplication. Wire them to the while loop and we want to add shift registers because these aren't static values. They're going to change over time and we want to pass that through the loop over and over. All right, now that we're ready for that, let's go into the event structure to the operations event. And from the functions palette, select a VI. We don't want to use one of the built-in uh, VIs. We want to use that sub-VI that we created called perform operation. This will take the two operands, the one that's stored and the one displayed, and the previously selected operation and perform it. The stored value is operand 1 and the number that's currently being displayed will be operand 2. And remember that's a string so we need to convert that string to a number and we want to use fractional string to number vi. Make sure you grab the correct node and take the number from that VI and take it and wire it to the operand 2. Take the stored operation and wire that into operation. Take that solution and we're going to wire it to the stored value. Now you might be getting a little confused wondering why we're not using the operation that was selected. We need to think about the order that the user inputs information. First they put the 5 in that store, then they put the times operation for this example, and then when they click the 4 it doesn't automatically perform it because it doesn't know when the user is done entering the number. It only performs the operation when it's told the next operation. So we store that 20 for the new operation that is addition. The displayed value will be 0, the initial value, indicating to the user that we're waiting for them to enter the next number. Next we need to retrieve the operation that was just selected so that we can store it so it can be performed later on. We will grab that 
uh, information from the button text. Use that button text property node, wire it to the control reference, and then pass that to the shift register for the operation on the right. That will update it for the next iteration of the loop. All right, we're going to do something very similar for the equal sign. We want to perform the operation, but instead of storing the answer, we want to display the answer because the user is finished putting in numbers and operations. That's what they're telling us with the equal sign. So I just copied the code from the other event case, and we're going to reuse it in the equal sign. We still need to convert the display string into a number and wire that to operand2. Operand1 is going to be the stored value. We're going to take the operation that was stored and perform it, and then take that solution and display it. Okay, so we'll go to the string palette because we want to display this number as a string in the display. So we need to convert it using a number to fraction string, vi. So we're displaying the answer, and for the current or the new operation and the stored value, we want to set those back to the initial values. Well, we're pretty much done. We need to go through the other event cases and make sure that we're passing the correct information. So in the clear, we want to set it back to the initial values. Timeout doesn't really matter. We'll just pass anything. And then through these other ones, we want to make sure that we're passing through the stored value and the operation. Looks like we're finished. Let's test it out. 4 times 2 is 8. You see that's correct. Taking that 8 minus 4 is 4. Clearing 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6. So we can see it's working pretty well. 